Last night was a good night and we had a good drink. All I needed was a really good sleep and the next day would be fantastic. Do you remember Jonathan telling me how great the weather's going to be today? Tomorrow's looking a little bit brighter. Really? A good few hours where it's up until dinner time. Not raining, not raining. Morning. As you can hear. Nice one, Jonathan, for building me hopes up. Can't believe it, me. Every day it rains. So we're packing up wet stuff again. I woke up to the sound of rain and I'm dusting for a wee. I've got to go out in that now. So I'll quick dash to the toilet. Can't believe it. Today we're supposed to be riding in the, on the roads, the best roads in the world. So last night's fun turned into this morning's nightmare. And you probably can't see it. It's just chucking it down. Absolutely bouncing down. So I'm disappointed and understatement. I was really hoping the weather would dry today. Well, it's just a waiting game. I've got a lot of my stuff packed. As you can see, <coughs> the box is packed. Waterproofs and a big box waiting for the sleeping bags and everything. After doing this the other day, we thought we'd just be brave, take the tent down in rain. It was a disaster. It, um, I got water in my tent. As you're rolling it up, I'm just rolling puddles into the inside of your tent. And then when I, pitch, when I pitched it again, everything was soaked. Um, add to that the, the waterproof lawnmower bag that I put everything in. I'd have to be putting a wet tent inside there, so... I'll wait and see if it eases off. If it, I'll give it an hour or so. If it's not eased off, I'm just going to have to go for it. It's not what I want, but... Yeah, very disappointing. You know, he'd organised all this trip, come halfway across Europe. Well, we come all the way across Europe. And the biggest disappointment is uh, the gross block now. Going over the gross blockner today would have been amazing in, in nice weather. In sunny weather, it would have been probably the best ride I've ever been on in my life. Um, but in this weather, there's not a road in the world that's fun in this weather. Not only that, it's probably dangerous if I'm honest. It's just windy, rainy, storms. Can't believe it. It's going to be a missed opportunity though, if I don't, if I don't do it and we bypass it, it's going to be absolutely heartbreaking. So as I said earlier, we were going to wait it out for an hour or so and then make a decision on the packing up. Hopefully then we can pack up in the dry. Seriously wet tent. <clears throat> and wet bikes. What everything? What a great start to the morning, eh? It's a grim start, isn't it? Not good. Wet. So it's time to pack up the tent, squeeze the water out with your t-shirt <laughs> and get the bike loaded up and get the hell out of here and see what fun we can have and try not to let this wet weather spoil our fun. Because let's face it, there's no point waiting around, this ain't going to stop anytime soon. As be wet here in this campsite, we might as well be wet on the road. Please. 
So I loaded the bike up with all my wet gear, strapped it all down, then put my helmet on my wet head. I'll just I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just get forward up bike and park in front of you. Yeah. Just keep yeah. I'm alright on this side. So we went to reception and paid our bill for the two nights. When you're having a bad day, things just don't go to plan. Do you remember this and the number on my tent? Guess which absolute muppet didn't take it off the tent, rolled it up, packed the tent away on the bike, went to reception to pay and they asked, where's your number? Oh no, I had to go back, unpack the tent and roll it back out in the mud. What an idiot. So, after my Mr Bean start to the morning, I was happy to get on the road, finally. Let's be honest, the weather wasn't the best start, but 15 minutes into the ride and a bit of banter, and these amazing views of these mountains with the size we've never seen before, really took the mind off the weather. We started to enjoy it and relax into the ride. As I was down to just the one GoPro camera with sound now, I didn't want to risk it when I set off this morning. It was still raining hard and I didn't want to risk water getting in that too. However, as I rode along, the weather did seem to ease off a little, so I decided to pull over and get the GoPro on the chin for some better footage. That is a much better view. Well, our first plan of action for today was to take these twisty Irpin roads up to Adolf Hitler's Eagle's Nest.
Why does this always happen to me? I see a free parking space, so I go for it and then people appear from nowhere. Try and get the bus now to the eagle's nest. In the German language, it's not known as the eagle's nest. It's known as the Kielstein House. Tickets. So what are you? The eagle's nest. Um, we nearly didn't come today because the weather from half five as you've seen this morning was absolutely horrendous. So we're here now. Looking forward to going up. We've bought our ticket with 30 euros. Uh, you've got to get the bus, which is coming in 15 minutes. Take us up to the Eagle's Nest. What a treat. Our bus has arrived. Getting on the bus they was blasting loud Michael Jackson music which obviously I don't have copyright for so we've had to skip that bit. Anyway, you get to listen to this nice German lady. We were told these were specially modified electric buses that take you up the mountain. The road is four meters wide, it's six and a half kilometers and rises 700 meters. Look at that view. In places the road seems a little bit too narrow. Amazing. And you're looking over the edge and if not good with heights, it's not great. I'm not too bad, but I know for a fact you would never get my mother on this. Bus ride's not for the fern tarted, is it? Now, I don't know why somebody scared of heights would be going up to a clifftop house anyway, but if you do fancy visiting this and you don't fancy this bus ride, close to the edge, there is a route up on foot that you can hike up. Now, obviously, that takes longer. We was on a schedule, so the bus it was for us. It's a long way down. Well, that was an eventful ride. Hell of a climb up in the bus, that must be powerful buses then, specially modified, he said. Um, no stopping, not for the faint-hearted if you don't like being on edge of cliffs. Anyway, look at this entrance. When we camped at Monacy, round the dams, we was told by a German lad that the views from here down over Birchus Garden are absolutely amazing. I was already starting to see our first problem. The mist was moving in. I was hoping it wouldn't stay around for long because we got lots to see. What a view. Not only is it very loud in here, it's very cold. As soon as you walk into this tunnel, the temperature drops by at least 10 degrees. It's like walking into a fridge. It's an 124 metre long tunnel. The tunnel is made out of pure granite blocks, which interestingly leads to the lift, which is also 124 metres up to the top. Again, for those that don't like heights or maybe don't like travelling in lifts or elevators, there is another way up. There's a path that goes round and you can walk your way to the top. I could imagine it's some climb. After the war, Hitler had plans to extend this tunnel, which is why it's left like it is. Thank you. 
We all piled into the famous gold lift, which is actually brass. It's very shiny and it holds 50 people. It's very crowded, as you can see. Well, there weren't much to film, there were too many people. I was beginning to realise that filming here at the Eagle's Nest is a lot more difficult than expected. It's so crowded, it's jam-packed full and it's like trying to film in a tin of sardines. Once you get away from the crowds, move away from the lift and get outside, you get to see these amazing views. Even on days like today where the mist is coming in, it still makes you feel the trip up was worth it. If you're wondering why there's nobody taking advantage of the facilities, it might have something to do with A, it's about 3 or 4 degrees, so it's pretty cold, and B, we seem to be in the middle of a rain cloud. Just running your hand through the air, you end up soaked. It is pretty wet. I've come up with just a t-shirt underneath my mesh jacket, and I have to say, I am cold. The views up here can be spectacular. Um, I was warned oh, a good 12 months ago that when you get here, if it's a foggy day or a misty day, you'll not see nothing. And in typical fashion, it's exactly what we've got. You've heard of Scotch mist, you want to try Austrian mist. <laughs> Proper pea super. Anyway, you can't ride past here and not, not come in, can you, even if it is poor weather. The fog's that bad, I've only walked a few feet and you can't see the house behind me. This cross above the eagle's nest was erected by Hitler. As you can imagine, it's very controversial. This is the black salamander, the rarest of the salamander family. So rare, they're nearly extinct. This is the place everyone comes to after you get to Eagle's Nest for the amazing view. Not today. Yeah, it's not good. Ooh, it's not good if you don't like drops either. Yeah, if you fell off there, it'd hurt. It's just, you can feel it in the air, can't you, it yeah. you. As Peter Kay would say, it's that fine stuff that gets you wet. Well, I guess that's it, back to the house, let's have a look round there. I have to say, and I can't hold back my frustration of this just being turned into some money-making cafe when really it should be a living museum. This should have been kept as it was. Some people would argue it's better off as a cafe. I have to disagree. <laughs> this is the famous Italian marble fireplace. Apparently a 50th birthday present from Mussolini. Here is a picture of Hitler sat in front of it. Well, the final verdict of my visit to the Eagle's Nest caught in two minds really. I am glad I did it. It is an amazing place and to think how it was constructed, you know, this tunnel, the lift and everything is absolutely amazing. Disappointed though in that it's not being left. I wanted to walk into 1945 and basically I wanted to see exactly how it would have been back then. 
In there, it's just a modern cafe now, and it bears no resemblance to what it would have been like, and that is a real shame. Uh, that I think personally have missed a trick there, and that was a disappointment for me. That all being said, I do recommend it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.